Hi everybody, so in today's video we're going to be doing Unit 1 Lesson 6, which is all about properties of limits. Thus far in the chapter we've already learned that we can find a limit by looking at the graph of a function, by looking at a table of values, And today we're going to add a third option, which is using properties of limits. And this is going to include the use of algebraic skills like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, all that good stuff to determine the value of a limit. So there are times when you will need to consider limits of a function symbolically. That means there's no graph, there's no table, we're just going to use symbols. You can use the following properties of limits to evaluate these types of problems. So let's suppose that we have two functions f and g where the limit as x approaches a of f of x is let's call it l1 and the limit as x approaches a of g of x is l2. One important thing to note here is that x is approaching the same number for both functions. The only thing that's different is that in each graph or each function there's a different y value that we're approaching, not a different x value. The sum of functions rule says that if you want to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x, all you have to do is take the two separate limits and add them together. So if you add the functions, the sum, you can add the limits. The difference of functions rule, and this should be a minus, I apologize. The difference of functions rule says that if you want to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus g of x, you can subtract the separate limits. So again, if you can add the functions, you add the limits. If you subtract the functions, you can just subtract the limits and get the final answer. The product of functions rule says that if you want to find the limit as x approaches a of f of x times g of x, then you can just multiply the limits, l1 times l2. And the quotient rule says if you want to divide the functions, you can just divide the limits divided by l2. But this is as long as l2 is not zero because you can't divide by zero. So then something different happens. A constant multiple rule says that if you ever take a function and just multiply it by some constant number, to find the limit, you can just multiply the limit by that same number. So if you have two times f of x, you can do two times the limit. And the nth root rule says that if you want to take the nth root, like the square root or the cube root or whatever of a function, you can just take that same root of the limit to find the limit. Now, this makes it sound really complicated, but it's really as simple as arithmetic. So in these types of problems, you might be told, for example, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is 3, c of g of x is negative 2, and c for h of x is 4 find the following. Well, if we want to find the limit as x approaches c of the square root of 3 h of x minus 2 g of x, we're just going to take the values from the directions and substitute them for h of x and g of x. Because these properties say that you're allowed to take a root and multiply by numbers and subtract, and all you have to do is do the same thing with the limits you already had. So what we would have then is the square root of 3 times the answer from h of x, which is 4, minus 2 times the answer from g of x, which is negative 2. Now, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16, and the square root of 16 is just 4. So my final answer for this problem would be 4. For problem number two, again, we're just going to substitute the values from the instructions into here. So instead of f of x, I'm going to put 3, and instead of g of x, I'm going to put negative 2. So I would have 3 times 5 times negative 2, which is going to give me negative 30 as my final answer. For problem number three, I'm again just going to substitute the negative two, which is the g of x limit, into here, which means I'm going to have seven minus negative two squared. 
7 minus two, negative 2 is 9, so I would have 9 squared, which is 81. And last but not least, again, just a big substitution question. So I would have 2 times the f of x limit, which is 3, plus 3 times the h of x limit, which is 4, over 4 minus the g of x limit, which is negative 2. Now, 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 4 is 12. So on the top, I have 18. And on the bottom, I have 6. And 18 divided by 6 is 3. Again, properties of limits, pretty straightforward. Nothing super crazy going on here. Now, in the following questions, we're going to be asked to combine two things that we've learned about. How do you find a limit on a graph? combined with properties of limits. So problem number one says find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x plus g of x. Now whenever we're asked to find the limit from the right, to, I'm going to find that value on the graph. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x, so here's 3, from the right would be here. My limit would be 6. And g of x from the right, as x approaches 3 from the right, would be here. So that's 8. And 6 plus 8 is 14. Now, that was pretty straightforward in my opinion. You're just finding limits on a graph and adding them together. We get a little bit more complicated when we start to look at two-sided limits. So the limit as x approaches 5 of 3f of x minus 2g of x. In order to figure this out, we're going to need to do the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of 3f of x minus 2g of x. And then separately, we're going to need to do the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of 3f of x minus 2g of x. And then we're going to need to see if those answers agree. So let's start with 5 from the left. So 5 from the left for f of x. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from the left is approaching this point right here, which is 2. So I would have 3 times 2 minus 2 times for g of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, from the left is approaching this point right here, which is 4. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 8 gives me negative 2. Now 5 from the right would be, on this graph, the same point because the graph is connected there. So I would have 3 times 2 minus 2 times on this graph, it would be the same point again because the graph is connected there. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 8 is negative 2. These two numbers agree, which means my final answer here would just be negative 2. Now let's try that again. So with a different number. So the limit as x approaches 3 of 4f of x times g of x. Again, this is a two-sided limit, so we're going to need to do each side separately and then determine whether the limit exists. So first, I'm going to need to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of 4 and then f of x times g of x. And then separately, I'm going to need to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 4 and then f of x times g of x. Okay, so let's start with 3 from the left. So we already looked at 3, it was that point right here. So 3 from the left is going to be 6, so I'm going to have 4 times 6 times, and then for g of x, 3 from the left is going to be 1. And 4 times 6 times 1 is 24. Now from the right, I'm going to have, we already actually did the right, so 4 times f of x was still 6, but g of x was 8. And 4 times 6 times 8 is 48 times 4, so 96, so 192. Now, oops, you can't see what I'm writing. I apologize. So again, I did the left side and the right side separately. 
because I got different answers for these, these limits would be does not, the answer for this limit, the two sided would be does not exist. And we could say because the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x 4 times f of x times g of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of 4 times f of x times g of x. Finally, last but not least, again, this is a two-sided limit, so we're going to do each side, the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left of f of x squared, and the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right of f of x squared, and we're going to see if they agree. If they agree, we're good. The limit exists, and that's the value. If they disagree, we're going to have to say does not exist. So let's do negative 3 from the left of f of x. So 1, 2, 3. Negative 3 from the left is approaching this point right here, which has a y value of negative 6. So I would have negative 6 squared, which is 36. And negative 3 from the right is the same thing, approaching the same point. So I would have negative 6 squared, which is 36, which means my two-sided limit would just be 36. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon, and have a great day.